in the day, it was believed that witches could be identified by any unusual markings that they had on their bodies. This was referred to as the witch's mark or the devil's mark. The mark was believed to have been from the devil to confirm his pact with the witch. So today, let's look at some real witches that were exposed for having this mark. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Top 5. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today we are looking at the top 5 haunted people with a witch's mark. Before we begin, you know the drill. Smash that like button, comment something down below, and obviously subscribe to our channel. Now, we'll continue on with this video. Starting off this countdown, we have John Reed. John Reed was one of the seven witches tried in 1697 Scotland. When he was caught, persecutors found that he had a mark on his loin. John said that the devil had nipped him there and that it indeed was a witch's mark. John also confessed that he was in service with the devil. The devil promised him wealth and abundance, but in return, John belonged to the devil. But John revealed that the devil broke his promise and never did anything he said he was going to do. On top of that, John admitted to attending a number of meetings with other witches. He also admitted that he was responsible for the torment of Christian Shaw. Christian was an 11 year old who claimed she encountered a pack of witches who then bullied her and stole her milk. He also admitted that they all drowned her in the local well. As a result of his confession, it was very clear that he was a witch and he was locked away in a cell. The next day though, he was found dead. He had hung himself in his cell with his own scarf. It was believed that this was the devil's work. The devil convinced him to take his own life because John exposed him. Within the following weeks, the other witches close to John took their own lives in their cell as well. Again, it's thought that the devil possessed them and killed them off one by one because he was pissed with them. In our fourth spot, we have Janet Howitt. Between in 1661 to 1663, 44 people in Fofor, Scotland were accused of witchcraft. Seven of those accused were executed. The fate of some of the others remain unclear. One of the main women was Helen Guthrie. She was not a nice lady at all. This woman murdered her own stepsister and the stepsister's children. But she was like, wait, 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 I'll help you, and claimed that she was able to identify other witches just by looking at them. So she said she would help them in the witch hunt if they went easy on her. She then went on to make up elaborate stories of witches meeting up at graves and eating the flesh of other humans, etc. The more she made up and pointed fingers, the longer she got to live. And same with her daughter, Janet Howitt. Janet was also accused of being a witch like her mom. In fact, she had a witch's mark on her shoulder. She said it was from the devil biting it. She also said that it hurt for so long until the devil visited her again and stroked her shoulder. When he did that, the pain immediately stopped. Now, Janet was imprisoned with the rest of the accused, but we don't know what happened to her. They held a trial for her and no one testified against her. Plus, they only had the mark on her shoulder as evidence. We truly don't know if young Janet was let go or sadly killed. What we do know is that her plea date was 1666, four years after her arrest. So she was in jail for quite some time. In our third spot, we have the Witches of Huntingdon. The Witches of Huntingdon were several individuals in the UK who were found guilty of witchcraft. First, we have Elizabeth Weed. Apparently one night, three spirits came to her and told her to renounce God and make a blood pact with the devil. So she listened and that's what she did. John Winnick also did the same, but only agreed to if the spirits would help him out financially. Others, including John Clark Jr., were also visited by these spirits and decided to also renounce God and make a deal with the devil. Out of the nine people accused, five were found guilty and hanged. Well, John Clark knew that they were going to search everyone's body for their witch's mark, which they all had. So what did he do? He cut off his three days before he was searched. Literally gouged it out of his skin so that the mark was gone. But I'm kind of confused because wouldn't that create another mark? I don't know, but I think he was let off the hook while he watched his friends be killed. He literally said, and I quote, It was foolish to let the authorities find their marks. I cut off mine three days before I was searched. He then denied ever making a pact with the devil or being a witch, even though he was. Moving on to number two, we have George Jacobs Sr. George Jacobs Sr. was an English colonist who was accused of witchcraft in 1692 during the Salem witch trials. George was quite the man around town. He had several run-ins with 
the law. He was known for having a violent temper, and in 1677 hit a man named John Tompkins Jr. Two witnesses said, and I quote, One blow, and if the latter had not held him by the arms, he would have struck him some more, he being in such a passion. Now he was fine for this. Then in 1674, he was sued by his neighbor after he chased some of his horses into the river where they drowned. He argued that the horses were trespassing on his property, whereas others thought he just liked wreaking havoc on town. Fast forward several years later, George Jacob Sr. and his son, George Jacobs Jr., and his daughter in law and granddaughter were all accused of witchcraft. Everyone got off except for Jacob Sr., and that's because he had a witch's mark. His body was searched and they found what was described as three teats on Jacobs. It was thought that if a person had an extra nipple, that this was a sign that they were a witch. Why? Well, it was believed that the extra nipple or teat was from when the devil or some demons sucked the witch's blood as a form of nourishment. It was said that Jacob Sr. had three of them. One in his mouth, one on his right shoulder blade, and one on his hip. Now, they weren't actually nipples though, it was just a quarter inch long fleshy thing protruding from his skin with a sharp point. They proceeded to stick pins in each of them to see what would happen. This was called the witch pricker. Apparently, if you are pricked and you don't have a reaction to getting pricked and you don't bleed, then you are a witch. Well, when they pricked each teeth, Jacobs never reacted to it and he didn't even bleed. So he was found guilty in August 5th. 1692 and was sentenced to be hanged along with the other witches. And in our number one spot we have Elspeth Rioch. Elspeth Rioch was an alleged witch in Scotland during the early 1600s. When she was 12 years old, she claimed that she was approached by two men. One was dressed in all black, the other in green tartan. The man in green told her that if she followed his instructions, that she would be able to obtain magical powers. He told her to boil an egg and use the condensation from cooking the egg and take it and rub it on her eyes with unwashed hands. Sounds like an eye infection to me. He said that this would give her the powers to see and know everything that she wanted. So she followed his instructions and bam, it actually worked. So now I kind of want to go home and try it. I don't know, maybe it will work. And she actually developed clairvoyant skills. When Elspeth was older, she was visited again by the men. This time it was only the man in black. He showed up in her room one night. He told her that he was neither dead nor alive, but trapped between heaven and earth. He also told her that to maintain her magic skills, she she needed to act dumb. That way, no one would suspect a thing. They'd be like, she's not a witch. No, she's way too dumb to be one. Well, eventually she was caught. In fact, she got in way more trouble because of her acting dumb. They were all like, she's fully a witch. She tried to trick us. Let's kill her. At her trial in March of 1616, she confessed to using her clairvoyant powers to spy on people, and she would also use magical spells to cure illnesses. Furthermore, when they inspected her body, they found a witch's mark. She had what appeared to be a scar in the shape of bite marks on her shoulder. Later she confessed that she was bit by the devil and that was the mark that he left. She was charged with witchcraft and deceiving locals by pretending she was mute. In the end, she was executed by strangulation before having her body burned. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below, do you have any interesting like birthmarks or marks on your body that people would look at and be like, bro, you're a witch? Let me know in the comments below, because half the time it was just a birthmark and they're like, oh, she's for sure a witch. She's like, what do you mean? I was born this way, you know? Lady Gaga, baby, I was born this way. Anyway, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top five scary squid game theories that change everything. Don't worry, I'm not gonna give out any spoilers. Just go watch it if you haven't already. John Styles commented, it's crazy how this series became so popular out of nowhere. Dude, that's the power of the internet. Like, they're all millionaires now. It's insane. It's also insane that if every single one of you, you know, donated like a dollar to me on PayPal, I could be rich. Oh. Anyways, uh, it's just crazy how things work like that. Ellis Hodomanny commented, Lindsay, your sign off for this episode should have been Steak Squiddy. I will never say that. I will absolutely never say that. Nice try. It's I'll see you when I see you. Stay spooky. Stay squiddy. You guys probably would have been like, that's so cringe. Ends025 commented, I haven't gone around to watching it yet, but I think I will have a look after this. Woo! So you're telling me that you watched this video. Well, thank you for watching it. But it's filled with spoilers, my dude! And you're gonna go and, I mean, suit yourself. It's a good show. You're still gonna be surprised. You're still gonna cry. You're still gonna yell at the TV screen like I did. I yelled a lot. I almost punched my... 
damn guy. If you guys know, you traitor, anyway. And Black Women Aware commented, it's Ollie, not Ali. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Dude, tomato, tomato, you know? Anyways, sorry about that. Even though Ali, like the way that she spelt it, I would go, Ali, she meant all. Anyway, I get what you're saying. All right guys, that's all the comments on shout out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to top five for more spooky videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you. Stay squiddy, stay spooky. <laughs>